Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing about annular lesions in dermatology. So annular lesions in dermatology is a very frequently asked question in our postgraduate examinations. And we have to know about a lot of annular lesions, but when asked suddenly we tend to fumble and we are not able to present our answer in a proper manner. So if we are able to classify the annular lesions properly, we will be able to remember it well and also we will be able to present our answer in a better way. Apart from the normal viva examinations, we should otherwise also know about the various annular lesions in dermatology. So in today's class, we will be learning about the various annular lesions in dermatology, how to classify them and also how to differentiate the various annular lesions because so many diseases have an annular presentation. Before going on to the uh, proper classification, I would like to tell you about the word annular. So annular word has been derived from a Latin word which is annular. Uh, annulus means ring. So any lesion which is having a ring shape appearance. What do you mean by ring shape appearance? That means the lesions will be present mostly in the periphery and there will be a central appearance which will be seen. So if such kind of lesions are known as the annular lesions. You can classify them as infectious and non-infectious. First, we will be talking about the infectious diseases in dermatology which have an annular presentation. So let us start with the classification again. So First, we will be talking about the infectious diseases which present in an annular fashion. Among them, the one which tops the list is obviously dermatophytic infections. So the dermatophytic infections, particularly the tinea corporis, they are they can have an annular appearance. So how to describe a lesion of tinea corporis? First of all, these lesions are itchy in nature. And if we carefully observe the lesions, so these are well-defined erythematous either annular or a polycyclic plug with, uh, with scaling and central pairing. So you can see over here that here two annular lesions are present. And these annular lesions, obviously, then they join together to form a polycyclic plug. So these are well-defined. Obviously, the patient has not applied steroid on it. So uh, these are well-defined, erythematous, scaly, annular or polycyclic plugs with central pairing. So it can be present anywhere on the body, from face, the trunk, the upper and the lower limbs. Flexural area can also be involved. So this is how a lesion of tinea corporis looks like. The second in the list is impetigo. Impetigo is a bacterial infection. And here you can see it is taking up an, an annular form. So impetigo, as we know, it is usually seen in the pediatric age group. And they leave behind honey-colored crusts. So that can be a differentiating factor because there are other vesicular bullet disorders which can also appear in an annular fashion. But deletions of empatigo, they leave behind a typical honey-colored crust and they are seen in the um, uh, pediatric age group. The third infectious disease in which annular lesions are seen is syphilis. So syphilis, as we know, uh, it is a great mimicker. Basically, any kind of lesion except for the vesicular bullet lesion can develop in syphilis, the secondary syphilis I'm talking about. And uh, annular lesions are very commonly seen in secondary syphilis. Annular lesions are usually seen over the palms and the soles. They are asymptomatic in nature. They can be easily confused with annular psoriasis or might be eczemas as well. But the clinching point is that they are asymptomatic in nature. They won't be responding to the topical corticosteroids or the normal conventional treatment that we uh, give for eczemas and psoriasis. And if your patient is not responding to the same, then obviously we have to get a TPHA done. And uh, based on our TPHA result, if we treat secondary syphilis, the lesions of Secondary syphilis, in this case, the annual lesions which are present over the palm and the source, they disappear after uh, the patient is given for proper treatment. Then, leprosy. In leprosy, uh, annual lesions are usually seen in the borderline spectrum. So, how can we uh, come to a conclusion whether this particular plug is that of a leprosy patient, a Hansen's patient or not? So first of all, you have to look for the surface changes. You can see that the central area in this annular plug is somewhat dry. There is loss of hair over these two plugs. Then if whether the patient is able to appreciate the hot and the cold sensation or not, we have to do the technique of fine touch and 
good touch as well. We have to palpate the nerves and then we have to look for the similar sensations in the peripheries apart from the uh, lesional area, apart from the area where the lesions are present. During the examination of leprosy, we usually tend to forget two points. The first thing is uh, we have to look for the feeder nerves. And the second thing is that uh, we have to definitely examine the buttock area because sometimes the lesions are present over the buttock area, but we tend to avoid examining in that particular part. So this is how we can come to a conclusion whether an annular plug is that of a Hansen disease or not. So it can be a borderline tuberculoid, mid-borderline, or a borderline leptomatous disease. Erythema multiforme. So erythema multiforme will have typical target or targetoid uh, appearance. And erythema multiforme has various reasons to appear. It can appear after a recent infection. That can be a viral infection. It is usually seen after the appearance of, uh, you know, a herpes infection. Patients can have erythema multiforme. Apart from that, in certain drug reactions also, the patient can have erythema multiforme. Certain vasculitis can also have an EMF type of appearance. Now let us move on to the non-infectious diseases in dermatology, which can have an annular appearance. So first we will be talking about the papillus formage disorder. So psoriasis, it has an annular variant. It will uh, have the typical silvery white shady plaques and uh, we can do the or we can look for the gradar test or the auspice sign to conclude whether this particular annular plug is of psoriasis or not. Annular lichen planus, it will be itchy in nature, it will have violaceous color, central clearing will be seen. Annular lichen planus is usually seen over the penile area. Then the petriasis flusia. So petriasis flusia it develops after a viral infection. It is asymptomatic in nature. It will have a mother patch, which is also known as the hedal patch, and then the new lesions will appear. And the lesions are usually appear, uh, arranged in a Christmas pattern kind of appearance. The annual lesions of um, uh, petriasis flusia, they are scaly in nature. They have a polarite of scale, and that is how we can differentiate it from the other annular papillus formage disorders such as psoriasis, which will have silvery white scaling, petriasis nausea, which uh, uh, the lichen planus, which will have a violaceous color, but petriasis nausea will have a scaly appearance, and that will be a polarite of scale, and that will be asymptomatic in nature, appear, uh, and that will be arranged in a Christmas tree pattern. Porokeratosis. Uh, is another papillus formage disorder in which all the vascular bullish disorders. Although bullish pemphigoid can also have an annular appearance, but Liga is the main disease, which is the linear IgA disorder or a childhood variant, which is the CBDC, they can have annular presentation. They have an annular presentation because the vesicles and the bullet they are apparent in uh, they are uh, present in a string of pearl appearance. So the, the arrangement of the vesicles in the bullets is such that they are, uh, that it gives an annular appearance and the central part is cleared from any kind of lesion. So this string of pearl appearance is seen in Liga or the CBDC, and this is one of the vesicular bullet disorder which uh, has a central a clearing or an annular uh, appearance. Okay, so this in uh, bullish impetigo is another vascular bullet disorder, which is of infectious pathology, which can have uh, an annular appearance. As you uh, already know, that it has a honey colored clustering form, uh, formation, which is not seen in Liga or CBDC. Coming to the granular matrix disorders, so sarcoidosis, it has an annular variant, which is annular sarcoid and granuloma annular. As the name itself suggests that granuloma annular, it is arranged, uh, the uh, lesions are annular in nature. It is very simple for us to get confused between uh, granuloma annular and tinea, particularly if the plaque is slightly bigger in shape. But it is very simple at the same time to differentiate between granuloma annular and tinea corporis. So the first thing is that tinea corporis is itchy in nature, but granuloma annular, it is non-itchy in nature. It is a, an asymptomatic disorder, which is usually associated with some underlying metabolic disorders such as diabetes or hypertension or uh, thyroid-related disorders. Apart from that, there will be the healing will be seen in patients of granuloma annular, while flowers of tinea, they have a scaly appearance. If you have granuloma annular, they will not respond to the normal 
antifungals that we use, be it topical, be it oral. In fact, they will respond to, uh, they will show a response to topical corticosteroids or might be uh, topical calcineurin inhibitors. But if by chance, we are not able to differentiate between tinea and granuloma and in there, even after differentiating, uh, you know, so many differentiating points. We can do a KOH test. KOH test will be obviously positive in tinea and it will be negative in cases of granuloma and in there. So it is not a gene nature, it is not scaly in nature, it is associated with metabolic uh, issues and it does not show response to the normal topical or oral antifungals. Coming to the connective tissue disorders are SCLE and neonatal LE. So SCLE, it has two variants out of which one of the variant is annular in nature and uh, the second one is neonatal LE which also have annular lesions. Most of the patients of SCLE or neonatal LE will have a positive anti rho antibodies. So if you have a suspicion that this particular lesion can be of SCLE or this particular baby might be having neonatal LE, do not forget to get anti rho antibody tested in those patients. So this was one of my patients of SCLE who, who presented with, with annual gloves. So this is in dissolving stage. That is why a lot of scaling cannot be seen in this uh, kind of patient, uh, in this particular patient. Now, eczematic disorders which have uh, annular appearances, so nimular dermatitis as well as seborrheic dermatitis. So seborrheic dermatitis, uh, not all of them will have annular appearances, but yes, the petaloid uh, kind of uh, seborrheic dermatitis will have an annular appearance. It's very simple for us to come to a conclusion if it is seborrheic dermatitis or not. Obviously, there will be greasy yellowish flowers uh, or saline will be seen over the scalp area. We need to examine the other seborrheic area, for example, the eyebrows. We have to look for the nasal labial folds, preto-auricular area, upper chest, upper back, the navel area. These are the some other areas where seborrheic dermatitis can present apart from the scalp area. So seborrheic dermatitis for us to come to the conclusion whether this is annular or not. Obviously, we are we are talking about the body lesions of seborrheic dermatitis. And petaloid type of seborrheic dermatitis is one of the uh, types where annular lesions can be seen. Figurative erythema. There are many figurative erythema. The three important ones which I would like to bring into your notice are erythema chronica migrans, which is basically the Lyme disease. Erythema annular centrifugum and erythema gyratin repens. So, if at all we see figurative erythema, so among the various figurative erythemas, erythema chronicum migrans is the one which is common, which can be seen, you know, relatively more commonly compared to the other type of figurative uh, erythema. It is a skin finding which is seen in the early stages of borreliosis. If we talk about the neoplastic diseases, there are two types of uh, neoplastic diseases which can have annular appearances. One is BCC, that is the basal cell carcinoma, or the second one is the mycosis fungoides. So basal cell carcinoma, which is also known as the rodent ulcer, it uh, can present as a slowly expanding annular blood, and uh, it can have a pearly uh, raised edge or the pearly uh, raised periphery with central ulceration. So uh, BCC can also present as uh, an annular lesion, particularly annular blood. Now vascular type of diseases which can have an annular appearance. So the name itself has annularis in its name. This purpura annularis telangiectoides. It is also known as the Majochi disease. It is a type of pigmented purpuric disorder. And uh, then pepper spots, they are characteristic. So to sum up today's class, annular lesions can be seen in multiple types of lesions. It can be infectious, it can be non-infectious. If we talk about the infectious uh, lesions, so it can be uh, either tinea, impetigo, syphilis, leprosy, uh, particularly the borderline spectrum, lepis vulgaris, and erythema multiforme. If we talk about the non-infectious lesion from its disorders, it can be psoriasis, lichen planus, pitreacetosia, porokeratrocytions, vesicular bullous disorders, particularly legal, granulomatic disorders such as sarcoidosis and granuloma annular, and CTDs such as SCLE and neonatal LE, um, eczematic disorders, petaloid type of seborrheic dermatitis and nimular eczemas, figurative erythemas, neoplastic lesions which can be seen in BCC and MF, 
and vaccination with the prepared with the pipa bura and nilaris injectors thank you have a great day